Hey guys, it's Denise Salcedo with Instincts Culture, and right now we are at Access Studio, and with me right now is Ken Shamrock. Ken, thank you so much for coming out here and you know chatting with me today. Well, I thank you. Thank you very much. It's going to be fun. Yeah, you know, you were away from pro wrestling for a while. What sort of made that return? That what made you want to come back? Well, I, I think uh, I took a year off. Um, you know, and for the last 20 years going into that, I was always training for something. I was constantly putting my body through training, never taking any time off. And so I went at the end of my career there, I said, you know what, I'm just going to stop doing everything. And so I kind of just stopped, didn't go to the gym, didn't train, spent time with family. And then about a year into it, I was like, I want to start training again. I just felt depressed. I wanted to go do something. I want to get my body back in shape. So I hit the gym. So I started working out. Three months later, people go, man, you look good. And I was like, I felt good. Like my body didn't ache anymore. My joints didn't ache anymore. My body was responding really well. And I was like, I feel pretty good. People go, man, you look like you could still go. Of course, that was the button. I was like, well, maybe I can. So I went over to Australia, started doing some pro wrestling over there. I started doing these different moves, stuff I didn't realize I could do. I was hitting it. And I was like, okay. So I made a post on my social media saying, I'm putting the wrestling world on notice. Ken Shamrock's coming back, and I'm coming for the world title. And uh, not really knowing where I was going to go for it at, but all of a sudden, I started getting all those responses. I was hitting it in uh, South Africa, in Australia. I was doing all these wrestling shows. And then all of a sudden, here came Impact. And next thing I know, I'm on a pay-per-view, uh, and I'm having matches, and my career is just taken off. But it all had to do with, I was just said, you know what, I'm going to let my body rest for a year. And then I started back training again, and I felt great. So it was that time that I took off, and I came back, started working out, that made me realize, like, okay, I can really start doing this and having fun at it and be good, not just be a 55-year-old 50, guy thinking I can still do pro wrestling. And, you know, it's interesting that you say that about giving your body time off and all of that, because when you came and had your match against Moose on Impact, you were doing some things that, you know, we had never seen from you prior, and it was phenomenal. You were in shape, and, you know, I don't think anybody could have argued that. Yeah, and I, that was a, you know, I wanted to make a statement when I did that, and that's why I did it that way, was because I wanted people to realize that when I made the statement that I was coming back and I felt good, I wasn't blowing some hot air like most people would do at that age. Well, I'm back, I feel great, and they don't. So doing that match, I wanted to make sure I made a statement to everyone, letting them know, no, I mean what I say, and I mean what I'm going to do. And what was it about Impact that made you sort of, you know, want to, you know, be part of them, you know, be part of their brand? I mean, they've done a lot of great, they've had a lot of great consistency with their storylines, etc. But why did you want to join up with them and what has the run meant to you thus far? Well, I think, first of all, watching the product, it made me feel like that attitude era again. Like, I watched the different guys there and I started looking at it I was going, man, these guys got some really good talent. And they're constantly going out and improving on their matches. They're aggressive. They're hard style and I was like I'll fit in there and so for me that's what really made me want to do impact and, and because I had some lineage there I, I, I was the first champion and so but just watching the matches and the guys there I thought I could fit in here because these guys are serious they're hardcore and it just made me feel like I was part of that era again of that attitude era and I'm glad that you mentioned the Attitude Era because that was one of the things I talked about with Sammy Callahan where he was saying, you know, we're doing something that, you know, the fans miss, that the fans aren't really seeing that often right now. And one of the things I want to talk to you about was your match that you had with Joey Ryan. What was that like for you? Well, it's just another aspect of pro wrestling. And I think that uh, when I first heard about it, I was a little skeptical. But then I thought about it and said, you know, this is 2020, 2019, 2020. Uh, things are changed. And in order for me to keep up with what's going on out there in the world, these are things that I have to be able to um, put myself through. I've got to be able to find ways to get this kind of stuff over because that's what 2020 is going to do. Um, there are going to be these kind of storylines and these kind of different things that are going to happen. And so for me, when I went into that match, my idea was to make sure that I put on the best match possibly. And I didn't care what the people were saying on the outside because you cannot draw a line in the sand of what you think entertainment is or isn't. That's not up for us, right? That's up to the social media and the people out there to say. And from everything that I heard, it was saying Joey Ryan is over. Yeah. 
it's funny because, you know, obviously there were those people, you know, there were people that were shocked, yeah. but they loved it. And then there were some people that were shocked and, you know, had, you know, things to say about that. But, you know, it's very interesting that you came in and, you know, you're this very respectable guy and you had this, you know, entertaining match. So, um, you know, that's definitely fun to see. You're sort of like, you know, thinking this sort of like, I guess you can say progressive modern way. Well, you have to, you know, I mean, I'm 55 and I want to make sure people know that I can still go. But at the same time, I want people to know that I'm not closed off, that I'm open minded and I can work with any style. Awesome. So speaking of that, being open minded and being able to work any style, what can we expect from you come 2020? Well, there's a whole lot more, man. You know, I got Valor BK coming up uh, uh, January 11th. We're doing uh, Valor BK 2. Uh, LeVar, got, LeVar Johnson against our champion, Mark Godbeer. Um, so we're excited about that. We did our first one. It was a hit. Our second one, we believe, is even going to be better. It's in Kissimmee outside of Orlando. Um, January 11th. Don't miss it because it's quick, it's fast, and it's exciting. And now I got to ask, come December 7th, this Saturday, your longtime rival, Tito Ortiz, is going head-to-head -head against former WWE champion, Pride veteran, Alberto El Patron. Do you have any predictions for that fight? Alberto, you know, he's definitely got his credentials, in a, and Eddie was a pro wrestler, and I respect everything that he's done. It's not about making friends in this business, you know. It's about looking at something and being real. And Tito Ortiz has fought every everybody in the world there was a point in time where they couldn't find anybody to fight him he was that good and so he's he has a credentials and for alberto to step in the ring against him i know a lot of people say well t was getting all this love don't overlook alberto it's like it's not about overlooking alberto it's about giving credit to a guy who is a hall of famer who has done everything there is to do in fighting it came out on top every time. Uh, so Alberto has got an uphill battle. It's not about overlooking him. Uh, it's about giving credit where credit's due. And Tito was a great champion. He's a great fighter. He's a Hall of Famer. And Alberto hasn't done anything that he's done, not even close. So you can almost understand why they're overlooking him. But at the same time, if I know Tito Ortiz, Tito Ortiz is not overlooking him. And one of the things I really like is all of the, you know, the different story, all of their different uh, thoughts and, you know, opinions are sort of layering into the storyline for this fight, which was one of the things I was talking about with Campbell, which I found very interesting. And I'm sure lots of people found interesting as well. But other than that, Ken, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me today. It was really awesome to sort of do this interview with you. And guys, if you like this interview, do not forget to give it a like, subscribe to the channel for more, and we'll see you next time. Well, first, before we go, I want to make sure we make this statement because what I don't want want to do is I don't want to pe people to think because you're winning and losing with the Tito thing that you believe in a political stance because I know it's a lot of political stance here and just because someone wants or myself likes Tito to win just because of his credentials doesn't mean that I stand on any of his political beefs or political stances along even with Alberto I don't stand on his political stances either I have my own so it's not about I know how all these people think sometimes. Well, he thinks he's going to win, so he believes what he's... No, it's about winning a fight, not about anybody's political stances. So separate all that bull crap out. It's about who do you think's going to win the fight, not about what they stand for. Awesome. I think that's well said. I love that. Ken Shamrock, everyone.